Yo, good morning. Welcome to the gathering. It's good to see you. Would you stand with us as you're able this morning?
name of Jesus, good morning and welcome to our service of worship on this Sunday morning. It's good to look out and see I'll be gathered here together. I want to welcome those who are worshiping with us online uh, this morning. And I invite you to complete our online connection card that you can find there on our website at keithumc.org. Let us know that you're here. Um, but it's good to be together. Um, can you believe Easter is just a couple of weeks away? And so we have a few more announcements about what Easter's going to look like later in the service. Um, so I hope that you'll uh, make some plans and, and plan to be with us on Easter Sunday and Holy Week uh, events that we have coming up. But today we are going to be exploring a story, might be a very familiar story to many of us, of the story of a man named Zacchaeus. Uh, we know from the little song, it was a wee little man, but he made a big life change when he met Jesus, when Jesus came into his life. And so as we prepare uh, our hearts and minds for worship together this day, let us go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Oh well, God, you are a God of the least and the last and the lost. We praise you and we thank you on this day that the Spirit of Jesus continues to pass through our cities and our towns, even passes through our churches, even makes His way into our own hearts. He continues to seek out those who are lost in so many different ways to save us and to bring us home. And just like Zacchaeus let himself be found and let himself be transformed by Your saving grace, Lord, let us be found by You in our worship together today. Let us, let Your Spirit do Your transforming work in our hearts and in our lives so that we may live ever more fully for You. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with us as you're able? is my reward and all of my devotion now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy through every trial my soul
received this morning. As we come to our time of sharing joys and concerns with one another, it's a joy that this is the first Sunday in the season of spring. It's great to see the sunshine out there, flowers blooming and things like that. And speaking of flowers, it's a joy to have these beautiful flowers on our altar this morning. Uh, they are, I'm told, um, for in honor of Pastor's Spouse Appreciation Month of March. So uh, we appreciate uh, our, on behalf of Tracy and, and Allie, on um, behalf of Andrew, I'm sure, um, as part of her appreciation, she will be doing the children's sermon th this morning. So, But we want to thank you. It's, it's beautiful seeing flowers and, and enjoying the springtime. I know it was spring break for our city and county schools this past week. I, I hope that some folks got a little bit of a break from, from school work, from screens, and that kind of thing over the past several days. Um, it's a joy to see and hear about uh, more folks getting uh, their vaccines and the relief that that brings. And so as that is opening up to more and more folks uh, along the way, it's also um, a relief I know to a lot of folks that, that economic stimulus checks are beginning to arrive. I know a lot of times we think about, have you gotten yours yet? And what are you gonna do with them? That was what Austin Festmeyer was talking about at our early service today. And so there are a number of folks certainly who, who need and, and, and can use those uh, checks very much uh, for their livelihoods. Uh, there are some others who maybe don't need them as much. And so we would just like to invite you what Austin invited us at the early service uh, was to consider turning those around, not using those for ourselves, but turning those around and doing some good uh, in our churches for our favorite uh, charities, maybe nourish one child here through the church, a number of different ways we can turn those around uh, to, for good in our communities. It's also a joy, Rusty Rollins, one of our church members, uh, who's the manager at the Food City downtown, um, has been nominated for the Food Manager of the Year in the United States, not just for food cities, but for all grocery stores throughout the United States, uh, which is a big honor. There are, I think, nine of those folks who are nominated at least this year, um, and so he's one of nine. So to be nominated is a tremendous honor. And uh, I know every time I'm down at Food City, um, Rusty is so busy. He's always off doing, so he's hard to keep up with, but he's what a wonderful uh, servant here in our community and through our church. And so we just re we rejoice with Rusty in the honor of being nominated. Number of concerns, certainly we want to um, lift up. We want to continue to lift up the family of uh, Tim McPhail and his family. Tim uh, is the girls basketball coach over at McMinn uh, County High School. Had some surgery this past week, um, is home recovering. They're trying to figure out what um, the way forward to go from here. He had some uh, a tumor in his brain that, that they that were able to take out. Um, and so just continuing to uh, respond to, to that. So we want to lift up. Tim McPhail and, and all of his family and his, his students and folks that he works with. Uh, continuing to lift up all of those who continue to face COVID uh, and those who care for them, our healthcare workers and uh, certainly folks in the health department and those who are providing vaccines for so many. Just want to continue to lift up our healthcare community. Uh, and it was also sad. I know we were all sad and, and worried, concerned to to hear about the, the murders in the spas down in the Atlanta area this past week. Um, not quite sure the fullness of the motives of the person involved with that, but eight people were, were killed there, six of whom um, are women of, of Asian American. Uh, and so it just it, part of a concerning rise in anti-Asian violence over the past several years. Um, and so we just want to uh, lift the, the, that community up there, the lives, the families of those who are directly affected, but just all who kind of live in a sense of fear and heightened anxiety uh, in the world in which we live, that we would um, be good neighbors to one another. Do we have other joys that you'd like to lift up and share with one another or concerns that are on your hearts this morning? Yes, Fallon.
Thank you, Fallon. So two things. What your grandmother um, is having a spot taken off of her knee this week, and so we want to lift her up. Um, and also, um, women, 97%, I think you said, of women who have uh, reported experiencing harassment uh, of some sort in schools, uh, workplaces, and just in a time when they have not felt safe. And so we just want to lift up. Uh, certainly, thank you for, for bringing that to our attention. Um, and that is, that is also something that we, we are concerned about and want to lift up in prayer. Yes. <laughs> Darla had a birthday last week. Wonderful. Happy birthday. Happy birth week. Birth month. I don't know if you celebrate birth months, but uh, thank you. Yes, yeah, C.H. Family of Beecher Talent, a local uh, gospel pianist, um, well known, well loved in this area. Thank you, C. Yes. Um, so tomorrow, my dad actually is going to be having uh, shoulder surgery. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to be having shoulder surgery. And so he's going to be having shoulder surgery. And so he's going to be having shoulder surgery. And so he's going to be having shoulder surgery. And so he's going to be having shoulder surgery. And prayers for your family as you care for Jim. Amen. Thank you. Very good. Jim, pray, pray and all goes well with that. Thank you. Some of us carrying concerns, we'd lift up our hands. Paul, did you have a concern you wanted to share? Gary Fulbright, who's been in the hospital with COVID and lifting up his family too. Thank you. Thank you. And if there are some who have concerns that would be unspoken, we'd acknowledge those with the lifting of our hands. And certainly if there are some needs that you would like to share with us that we can join with you in prayer, there's a way you can let us know by email at prayer at keithumc.org. Uh, or if you've completed an online connection card, you can let us know on that as well. Let's go now to the Lord in this time of prayer. God of all seasons, we give you our thanks and our praise for this magnificent world in which you have placed us. As the world awakens from its winter slumber and bursts forth in bird song and bright colors and growing green grass. Or we can't help but feel a little bit like our world must feel as we find our way out from underneath this pandemic that has blanketed us for so long. And though there is certainly still cause for caution, there is also so much reason for hope. And for that we give thanks. For vaccines that are finding their way into people's arms, the psychological relief that that brings for the stimulus payments and for the economic relief that that brings to families and businesses. For meals and for casseroles, for those who are sick or having surgery or grieving, for the comfort that that brings, for birthdays and other celebrations, all the ways in which we enjoy life together. Lord, we give you our thanks. And Lord, we continue to long for a time when we would treat one another not on the basis of skin color or genetic heritage, socioeconomic status or gender or gender identity, or any of the other markers by which we distinguish ourselves from one another. Lord, we continue to long for that time when we would be treating one another the way in which Jesus treats each one of us as a beloved and cherished child of the Almighty God who bears your image in our own lives and throughout this world. And so, lend us your Holy Spirit during this time of worship that we might hear your word, that you would speak to us, that that word might bear fruit in our hearts and in our lives, that we might be transformed into joyous and generous people so that others may come to know your love and your grace even through us we pray 
as we pray together the prayer that Jesus gave us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time I'd like to invite Allie to come forward. Good morning. So apparently since, since I have the microphone and uh, it's Pastor Wife Appreciation Month, for my gift from you all, I would like you all to refer to Andrew as Allie's husband instead of me as pastor's wife. So that's, that's what I want <laughs> from you all. So now on to the children's moment. So uh, this morning we're going to be talking about Zacchaeus. Now, how many of us have heard of Zacchaeus before? Like everybody, right? Yeah, so it's a pretty familiar story. So Jesus is coming into this town, and everyone is gathering to see him. And Zacchaeus is there, but Zacchaeus couldn't see over the crowd. How many of us have had that happen before, where we're, we're going to watch something? Maybe we're at a parade, a movie theater, and we can't see in front of the people in front of us, except for Jim Kirkland, because he's a thousand feet tall, right? So Jim, will you stand up for us, please? So imagine we're trying to see Jesus, and that's what we got standing in front of us, right? Yeah, how are we supposed to see Jesus? You can sit down now, Jim. When I asked Jim if it was okay if I made fun of him in my children's sermon outside, he said, yeah, when we used to go to Disney World, I used to put Zion up on my shoulders just to make it worse. So, you know, that's problematic. But these people are wanting to see Zacchaeus, and they can't, he can't see, not I've totally messed up. Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus, and he can't, he can't see him because of the people in front of him. He's too short. So what does Zacchaeus do? He just climbs up in a tree, and he's like, you know what? I'll see Jesus from this tree. So that's pretty smart, right? Well, some people were thinking, how silly. Zacchaeus is a tax collector, so he comes and takes our money, and now he is up in this tree, and he thinks Jesus is going to pay him attention. Well, you know what Jesus does? He goes up to Zacchaeus and he says, come down right now. I'm going to stay at your house tonight. How crazy is that? This person who couldn't see Jesus, that took money from these other people, climbed up in a tree and Jesus said, no, I'm going to come stay with you tonight. Because it doesn't matter what we do and it doesn't matter the silly actions that we might take. Jesus loves us in spite of all that. And so when we seek out Jesus, just like Zacchaeus does, Jesus is going to forgive us for our sins, and Jesus is always going to love us. So will you guys pray with me this morning? Dear God, thank you for always making it to where we can seek you out and you loving us no matter what. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I heard that to say that Jesus likes short people better than tall people. Church over, everybody's free to go.
consider me your friend and capture my heart again and capture my heart again cause your love is extravagant Your friendship Ooh, is sentiment Shout out to uh Scott and our tech team back there for getting us back on track, so thank you. <laughs> All right, glad y'all can hear me. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to be reading Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, The Message. Then Jesus entered and walked through Jericho. There was a man there, his name Zacchaeus, the head tax man and quite rich. He wanted desperately to see Jesus, but the crowd was in his way. He was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. When Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, delighted to take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped. What business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Zacchaeus just stood there a little stunned. He stammered apologetically, Master, I give away half my income to the poor, and if I'm caught cheating, I pay four times the damages. Jesus said, Today is salvation day in this home. Here he is, Zacchaeus, son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to find and restore the lost. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week we talked about the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. It's a story about a rich man who got it wrong. He had an opportunity, a chance to share his wealth with poor old Lazarus. And he missed that chance to make things right. And today we hear a story about a different rich man. But this rich man, Zacchaeus, is able to turn things around and to make things right. We get the sense, though, that at first Zacchaeus is on this very same path as the rich man from last week. Zacchaeus is very wealthy. He probably wears expensive clothes and eats luxurious feasts. And at first glance, it seems like Zacchaeus has it all. But there's one thing that Zacchaeus doesn't have. Friends. He's not a very popular guy. In fact, he's hated by all the Jewish people there in Jericho. And the reason that he is so hated is because he is a tax collector. Now, every time we talk about taxes, everybody gets a little bit tense because nobody likes paying their taxes, right? April 15th is just around the corner. And uh, my dad is actually a certified public accountant. And so growing up, April 15th kind of had a special importance. It was a special day for me that probably wasn't uh, that way for y'all. But, you know, growing up, it was a day of celebration because that meant I got to see my dad again. (laughs) And so it was an exciting time. But, but for most of us, tax day is, is one of the most hated days of the year because nobody enjoys paying their taxes. But Zacchaeus is not your, your average, your typical certified public accountant. He isn't just a tax collector, but he is the chief tax collector. And the chief tax collectors in Jesus' day were especially hated because they were known for colluding and working with the occupying Roman government. They take advantage of others in order to make a good profit for themselves. 
Zacchaeus is essentially a Jewish man taking money from other Jews for the benefit of himself and the Roman Empire. And so for this reason, I'm sure that uh, many people consider Zacchaeus to be a traitor. He's so corrupt that he even makes money off other tax collectors that work under him. He's a shrewd and cunning businessman. Now, in modern day America, uh, probably be celebrated for his wealth and success. He's risen to the top of his p- profession. He's in control of the whole city of Jericho, which was one of the greatest taxation centers in the area. So it, it's strange that Zacchaeus, a wealthy, successful tax collector, it's strange that he desperately wants to see Jesus. He hears that Jesus is coming this way, and, and maybe he heard about Jesus before. Maybe there was something missing in Zacchaeus' life that, that made him interested in Jesus. You know, I, he didn't have a lot of friends. I'm, I'm sure he was lonely. But he, he somehow hears about this Jesus. Maybe he heard about how Jesus had treated the, uh, the sinners and the outcasts. Maybe he'd heard how Jesus rubbed shoulders with tax collectors like himself. And so Zacchaeus runs to the path where Jesus is traveling in order to, to catch a glimpse of Jesus. You won't know if, if Zacchaeus is planning to, to try to speak to Jesus or ask something of Jesus, but, but we know he's going to at least observe him, to at least just get a glimpse to see Jesus. But there's only one problem. He can't see through the large crowd. He's too short. I don't know about you, but, but whenever I hear the name Zacchaeus, the first thing I think about is that Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Everybody remembers that, that song growing up? Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Everybody thinks about that story. It's, it's a song that's ingrained into our minds as children. Zacchaeus is short. He can't see through the crowd. When I was in high school, my pastor, uh, Drew Henry, preached a sermon about Zacchaeus, and he questioned whether or not Zacchaeus really was short. He said that in the original Greek language, Zacchaeus, it says this, Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus because he was short. Notice that the he in that sentence isn't specified, is it? Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus because he was short. So, is it Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus because Zacchaeus was short? Or is it Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus because Jesus was short? I remember, like it was yesterday, my my pastor Drew Henry standing up and he said, today I'm in the pulpit and I'm the resident theologian and I say Jesus was short. (laughs) His point was that Zacchaeus was not able to see, not because of, of his short stature, but because of his profession. Zacchaeus was tall enough to see, but it was a crowd of people that shunned him and barricaded him in. It was that crowd that intentionally blocked his view because of his profession as a tax collector. Zacchaeus was surrounded by the people that he had cheated and extorted and swindled, and this was their chance for payback. Can you imagine what it it might have been like for Zacchaeus to be surrounded by all of these people who despised him and hated him. It was probably a risk for him to even be out in public like that. I'm sure he received a number of of threatening glances. Maybe he overheard several angry whispers. No one in this crowd is going to let him stand in front of them. Nobody in this crowd is going to move over a little bit so that Zacchaeus can can see through. Nobody in this crowd feels bad for Zacchaeus. And I wonder, do we ever fall into this trap when we're wronged by someone? Do we delight at the opportunity to, to get some payback? Do we enjoy ostracizing those people that we don't like, those people that maybe who have hurt us? I wonder, what might we do if we were in that crowd? Would we move over and let Zacchaeus through, or would we jump at the chance of of vindication and revenge? 
How do we respond when the tables are turned and we have the opportunity to either offer retribution or grace? What would we do in this situation? Zacchaeus is determined to see this Jesus that he had been hearing so much about. And he wants to see this this man who preaches with authority. He wants to see this man who heals the sick and the diseased. He wants to see this man who reaches out to the hurting and the oppressed. He wants to see Jesus. And so he gets an idea. He, He runs ahead of the crowd. He runs ahead of Jesus and he scurries up a sycamore tree. And he does this because he knows that if he stays in the crowd, if he stays where he is, he will have no chance of seeing Jesus. He does this because he refuses to let the crowd stop him from seeing Jesus. Jesus passes by the tree, but then Jesus actually looks up into the tree and sees Zacchaeus. Have eye contact, make eye contact. And, and, and Jesus calls Zacchaeus down from the tree. And, and at, at this point, I'm sure that the crowd probably got a little excited because they're thinking, oh, here we go. Now is our chance to see Jesus give Zacchaeus a piece of his mind about how he has treated all of us, how he has taken money and cheated us, and ripped us off. After all, Jesus has a lot to say about rich people in the Gospel of Luke. So here we go. Here we get to see Jesus kind of stick it to Zacchaeus. You know, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus says a lot of bad things about rich people. Luke 6, 24, Jesus said, Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Luke chapter 12, Jesus tells a parable of the rich farmer who wanted to build bigger barns, but then that night was called to account by God. In Luke chapter 18, Jesus has an unfortunate encounter with a rich young ruler. And of course, things did not end well for the rich man in Jesus' parable from last week. Jesus is always challenging the rich and sticking up for the poor. So imagine the crowd's shock when Jesus does not chastise Zacchaeus, but instead he invites himself over to this chief tax collector's home. Everyone in this crowd responds with grumbles and outrage. It wasn't just the Pharisees who were outraged, but it was everyone. The crowd must have thought, how could Zacchaeus have the honor of of having Jesus come and stay in his home? Doesn't make sense. Zacchaeus is not a good church person like the rest of us, you know? Jesus is going to be the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus hears the grumbles, but he doesn't really seem too concerned about that. Instead, he he responds with excitement. He welcomes Jesus into his home. And something about this encounter with Jesus changes Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus quickly announces that he's going to give half of his possessions to the poor. And then he, he goes further and he says, and if I've cheated anybody over anything... I'll pay them back four times the amount. This goes far beyond what's required by Jewish law. And Zacchaeus does this without any prompting, without any challenge. He does this because deep down he knows, he's always known, that this is the right thing to do. Zacchaeus doesn't make this generous offer because of the crowd's grumbles. But he did it because of the joy that he experienced through meeting Jesus, through seeing him face to face. Perhaps the fact that Jesus addressed Zacchaeus and honored him by inviting himself to his home gave Zacchaeus the assurance and the affirmation that Zacchaeus had always needed. Jesus made this invitation out loud so that everybody there would hear it. He wanted the crowd to see. He wanted the crowd to hear because he realized that Zacchaeus needed some attention. He knew that Zacchaeus had, walked, he had lost his way a little bit. Who in your life needs some help? Who in your life needs a little bit of attention? Who in your life has lost their way a little bit? 
throughout the Gospel of Luke, we see that Jesus makes a habit of reaching out to the poor and the oppressed, but he also makes a habit of reaching out to the lost. And we're invited to follow in those footsteps of Jesus as we reach out to the hurting, the oppressed, and the lost. And sometimes that means that we have to reach out to people that uh, we may not, may not like. It's easy, you know, to reach out to the people who look like us and act like us and think like us and believe like us. But, but what about those who are different? How can we reach out to the people who are marginalized in our own community? One thing that we can learn from this story in Luke is, is the importance of generosity. You know, sometimes it's, it's difficult to be generous. But we see this extreme generosity in the way that Zacchaeus responds to meeting Jesus. Zacchaeus gives freely. And, and I think it's important to know that Zacchaeus isn't really just simply giving money, but he's changing his way of life. And that's much harder to do, isn't it? Sure, you, you can give some money back, but, but changing your way of life that's much more difficult. Zacchaeus is, is going from a life of wealth and greed to a life of generosity. He pays back his debts. He changes the way that he operates his business. Zacchaeus makes the decision not to skim money off the top, but to treat people fairly instead. So Zacchaeus has this huge change of heart, but unfortunately we don't see that same change of heart in the crowd, do we? crowd is, is unwilling to be happy for Zacchaeus. You'd think maybe that the crowd would, would celebrate because Zacchaeus has been given this opportunity to, to change because of Jesus. But the crowd responds with nothing but grumbles. You know, I, I would like to think that the crowd would at least be happy to hear that they're getting their money back from Zacchaeus. But, but I wonder if they ever really came around to Zacchaeus, if they ever really forgave him, if they were ever really willing to accept him, would their opinion of him really ever change? Or would he continue to be shoved and pushed aside? You know, what's, what's amazing about Zacchaeus is that he could have responded like the rich man from last week. He, he could have held on to his wealth and, and hoarded his money. But something about this encounter with Jesus changed Zacchaeus. And for that reason, Jesus tells Zacchaeus, and he tells the grumbling crowd that's there listening as well, that today salvation has come to this house because this man too, this guy too, he counts. He is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Let us pray. Loving God, as we reflect on when Jesus walked through Jericho and called out to Zacchaeus, we are reminded that you call out to us as well. You are always there watching and guiding our steps. You are always there to seek us out in the midst of our busy lives. You're there to offer us an invitation to change our ways, to be transformed, and to turn away from our selfishness. This morning we ask that you would lead us on a path of generosity as we reach out to others and share the love of your Son. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Is it coming through? Would you stand with us as you're able this morning? Feel thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. day or by night 
Waking or sleeping Thy presence My light Be Thou my wisdom And Thou my true for this service of worship this morning. We do have a few things that I want to announce real quick. We'd like to offer Holy Week communion for those that are unable to attend our Holy Week uh, services. So we'd like to come to your home for a brief porch visit next Sunday afternoon, March 28th, between 1 and 4 o'clock. And so please let us know at the church office by Friday at noon if you'd like to receive communion or if you'd like to go and help serve communion to others. We'd love for you to, to participate in that. Also, you can sign up for our Easter services on our website, keithumc.org. We're going to have two services here in the gathering and two services in the sanctuary, um, 9 and 11, and then an afternoon service outdoors as well. And so we'd love for you to to sign up so that it just gives us an indication of how many people to expect for Easter. Um, If you'd like to give an offering this morning, we have baskets by the door. And you can also give on our website, keithumc.org. You can give on our app, or you can mail in your check, P.O. Box 1, Athens, Tennessee, 37371. And now I invite you to receive this benediction. Arise and go in peace, and may God's love be with you and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.